right, guys, welcome back to the Buck Fever podcast. It looks like tonight might just be me and Jake again here. I know Colby and Eli are pretty busy uh, kind of winding down from the 4th of July weekend here, and it sounds like Colby might have another little family trip in the works coming up here. So everybody's pretty busy, but we're just trying to keep getting this content out for you guys. So Jake and I thought tonight we could kind of chat about some of the summer deer chores we've been taking care of because we've both been spending plenty of time in the woods getting some of that stuff taken care of. And so there's there's quite a bit to share there. But I know you just released a video this week um, on some of the stuff you were working on there. It looked like a lot of trail camera work for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a... It's a fun time of year, especially now that we get the, the cell cams, so they all get sent, obviously, right to our phones, and then it just sit all day long, their phones blowing up and getting pictures, which is crazy. I mean, it's still pretty early where they're not, like, giants. I mean, still probably got, what, month, good month for sure, maybe month and a half to still put on some some bone, so it's, it's exciting. It's almost like Christmas every time I get a text message, like, oh, what's it going to be? But, uh, so yeah, I got all them out. Uh, I still got to add some, I got to change all the, the locations and stuff. And I think we're going to try and get solar panels out for all of them. Cause we had it on one last year and it, I mean, it was insane how we didn't have to change the batteries in it once. And we changed the batteries and the other eight, probably six times. And they're like, I'm pretty sure they're D batteries. So it's not cheap at all to do that. Right. So we just figured we'll probably bite the bullet. It's in the long run, it'll pay out that we get these solar panels for i don't know if they're 60 or 80 bucks one of the two so the upfront cost is more but i I think it's well worth it so we'll probably do that and you know just right now wherever we put these cameras doesn't matter there's tons of grass so kind of going around mowing all that down and breaking branches just so i'm not getting you know 2,000 pictures of a piece of grass moving and whatnot so did you put them in primarily spots that you've had them in before did you pick any new spots for the cameras this time well we were anticipating it being corn this year because the last two years have been beans but it was beans again this year (laughs) so we put quite a bit on the fields just because it's you know high traffic area a lot of them are going there and then the other few are kind of in our normal spots on food plots which aren't even planted yet but i know they still travel through them and there's water holes there so for now, probably till September they'll be there, and then we'll start transitioning them into the uh, the woods and more rut areas. And you know, when those beans start turning yellow, they don't really touch them. So, right. So, do you have any prospects yet in the first couple of days that the cameras have been up? Um, I got one today. That I think. Well, not, I don't want to spoil anything or jump the gun, but it might be a deer I had a, two years ago that made it through. And he's a goofy one, but if he's, ooh, I think he is, he'd probably shoot him. Which one? You you know him all too well. You had a lot of footage. I had a lot of footage of him. It was a year and a half. A year and a half. found his shed. Was it Junkie? Uh, it might be. He's got no like way. five brow tines. He's got like five brow tines and. What? Yeah, he's goofy looking. Okay, you get it. Yeah. Pretty... You yeah, I can send, send that picture. Right now, actually. <laughs> He's got some, like, really thick bases, obviously. It's not with velvet on it. It looks way bigger, but he's looking right at the camera for, like, 15 pictures. Well, that year that he was running around and you and I hunted out there together, and uh, you wanted me to shoot him then. Well, right. I just thought he was cool. And then he kind of disappeared last year, or he was just normal looking, and we didn't realize it. But now, if it is him, it's it's cool looking. It's yeah. way too early, but I mean that picture he's got five started. Right. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It looks like a buck that Ben and I found in the like the little strip of woods over by our house that died, yeah. got hit by a car or something. But it has like the two brow tines, and it's got two brow tines like sticking out the other direction like bullhorns or something yeah like 
Yeah, that's that's goofy looking. It's hard to say if that's yeah. him, but that's a cool buck for sure. I don't know. He's got some pretty pretty big bases, and there's not that picture, but there's another picture of him standing broadside. He's pretty big. Okay. So well, that's that's a good prospect. Cool. You got any other ones running around yet? Um, I'll send you some more. <laughs> there's a decent couple, but. Like I said, it's pretty early. It's, yeah, it's early for sure. That nighttime one's my favorite, I think. Oh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> getting a little bit frisky. A little too early for that. <laughs> the rough time. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, that's some decent bucks. It's early, I though. Know you, I know you sent me that one uh, a couple weeks ago already. That was a pretty, pretty solid one for... Yeah, that that was a really good one, but I don't know. Yeah, I, he hasn't been back yet. We've got a doe and two fawns that are on the cameras every single day. Couple other lone does, and then bucks are pretty sparse right now. It's just like once in a while we see them cruising through, which you know a lot of people will tell you that's kind of somewhat of a a good thing, I guess. You know, they got their summer habitat, and then they're like fall to winter habitat, and you know, supposedly if they're not there as much in the summer, they'll be there a little bit more in the fall, which I could see. You know, we've had plenty of summers where we get pictures. We had one a couple of years back. We had pictures of two shooters like every day. And they I were remember. really good bucks. And then you remember like September hit and gone, just never saw them again. And mm-hmm. then come to find out they both got shot by the neighbors Right. pretty early on in the season so mm-hmm. you know it's i always love getting the pictures all summer long but if the trade-off is actually having them in the fall i guess i guess i'll take it but like you said it's it's still so early and you know we were up there doing all kinds of work we, all of our cameras were dead basically we had one that still worked um and they all were just in disarray. None of them were really taking pictures. You know, we went through all the SD cards and there was really like nothing there. So we don't really know fully what's all been running around, but now we got everything back in good shape. So, but we made so much racket, you know, like that it's just, it's going to be tough to really see the regular pattern of deer up there for a little while. They're, they're going to be laying on the down low for a little while, but, for anybody who right. didn't see your video on Monday, what's the trail camera setup that you're running? Um, well, we're running a Cuddy Link. Um, we've had them for, I believe this is the third year now. Um, I was a little frustrated, to say the least, right away with them. But after I you know, just took the time to learn them and stuff, it, it made a lot more sense. And I was... I'm pretty happy with them. The, I mean, the picture quality is a little blurry, but I guess that's what you get when you got nine pictures sending it, I don't know, what, 50, 60 miles through a text message. So it's kind of, I mean, you got to take it and choose there. I mean, you're not, you're not going to great, get great quality, but I know some, I shouldn't say that because I know some cameras are really good, but at least the ones that we got, because um, we pay monthly for you can have up to 16 on one camera. So we just, I think we have the unlimited package for like unlimited pictures. And so 40 bucks a month, or you can pay all lump sum and they give you like a little break, but we do a 40 a month because we only keep them up for six months. So, I mean, I, it's, I can't complain. We get every single picture gets sent to us. And I, if we get all these solar panels, I, I physically wouldn't have to ever go out there and touch them pretty much for six months. So. Yeah, that'd know. be, that'd be a game changer for sure. I know that's kind of a thing. Like we we run all the spy points, um, and you know when it sends them through, they're a little bit grainy. And then with those, if you have like you can buy a certain number of HD download requests. So then, like it's it's taking pictures in HD, but it sends them to your phone at a lower resolution because it's easier to send. Because a lot of times, you know, out in the woods, there's not the greatest cell service. So it's a little bit easier if they sell if they send them to you at a lower resolution, but then if you want you can, you know, pay extra to have a certain number of downloads in there where then we can like request to have an HD version sent to us and then it'll do that. So that's 
it, it's a system that makes sense. It, you wish they could all be HD, but I get it, you know, the way that it is. Because if you guys go out and pull the cards, they're all good pictures, right? Yeah, and they're clear. I right. mean, not to my knowledge, I don't think that we have that op- option with the, the Cuddy Link, but that'd be nice. I mean, maybe that's something in the future they'll look to, but I don't know. I can't really complain because, it's like I said, I physically really don't ever have to go out there and do anything with them once we get these solar panels, so. Yeah, for sure. No, that's and I got, I've got like, I don't know, three other cameras, two Moultries, and a wild game. I talked about that. I just I have for fun, just kind of. Those ones I gotta pull the, the chips, but you know I don't really care too much about them. I'll put them on the sides of the field edges, and if they work, they work. They don't, they don't. Type thing. So. Yeah, we got a couple of them too that we had like before the cell cams were a thing or before they were really popular, we just kind of, yeah. th- like those were our starter cameras and a lot of them didn't really last this long, but the ones that did, we just throw up. Like you said, we just put them in certain spots where we don't necessarily care to see pictures as they happen, but good to still have a camera on them. when we have extras that work just fine, you might as well get them out in the woods. So yeah, right. it's, that's always um, always a good idea, just the more the merrier. As long as you're not putting them, like, in really obvious places that's going to end up spooking deer away, you can't really go right. wrong with it. No. So what else did no. you have going on there this past couple weekends? I know it was a lot of food plot work. Yeah, well, um, more on this weekend, I was – cutting grass trying to a tractor was giving me problems but we finally got it going and i was we cut we got this one stand where i got busted last year actually down there on that buck um and it, during the rut i grunted him in and i i guess i didn't really get busted it just he came up i don't know like really quick and i couldn't draw back because he was so he was 11 yards away standing there looking at me right at buck and the sun's just glaring it just was the, not the best stand location, or it was good. I just, I just got caught off guard, and I should have been more prepared. But um, to get down there, it's like six foot tall grass to get all the way down there. So we usually cut a path with the mower all the way down there, so it's super quiet getting in there. And a couple more paths, or like in front of the cameras, I cut one of the food plots because it was uh, way too tall. And then I'll probably spray that one. But you know, just typical chores, and then tractors were. I had to fix both the tractors I was using. Actually, tire came off on one, and <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was uh it was quite the show. But we got it all done, and I think we're gonna try and plant corn in like two weeks. It's ninety day corn, like I said, I don't really know if it's gonna grow or whatnot, but that's what experimenting is for, and trying this spot. Well, I shouldn't say that be- because uh, I also ripped them. I dissed those two plots over again just to kind of really smooth them out and get the, the chunks all chunked up, I should say. So, yeah, that was pretty much my Sunday. Um, I know you were up there on Monday, right? Yeah, you had off Monday. Yeah, my dad and I made the trip over there on, on Monday, and we, oof, it was, it was 94 degrees. I don't know what the real feel was, but it, had to be pushing a hundred. I mean, it was brutal out there. But oh, yeah, she was. Warm. Yeah, it was really warm. But you know, it's you kind of just have to take the days that you can go. It's it's a big enough trip that it's not something you can just decide one day you want to do it. You know, we had a we had to make a plan for it. We have a Google Doc that we share um, between a couple of us to just kind of jot down ideas, things that we might need to buy or rent or remember to pack in the truck when we make the trip. So it's it's kind of a production, but we did a pretty good job of it. I don't think we really forgot anything that we wanted to have. Um, of course, like you with the tractor, we had some mechanical failures, uh, but nothing, nothing that set us back too major. But we the biggest thing of the day was cutting a food plot that has really been my vision for like five years, probably just for what I knew it, it could be. We just really, 
really opened up a big area for it because there was this whole this whole strip right through the middle of the woods that was there for like a, a, a it was a power line and it was a couple of years back that they ended up taking that out so now there's no more power line but there's obviously no trees there there's no nothing so it just ends up being tall grass which you know the tall grass is always good for does and fawns they kind of like that cover even some of the really younger bucks do but you just are never going to see a giant buck bedded down in tall grasses like that it's just not their thing that's not where they like to bed so as much as it's nice to have that tall grass as cover for some of the younger deer you know the does and fawns it's like i don't necessarily that's not my target that's not what i'm going after you know i, I want to have a property that sets up for some of the bigger bucks and this year has just been extremely dry over there so there's kind of a i wouldn't say it's a shortage of food but like there's probably not going to be as much as there normally would be so i think that makes it even more valuable if you do have food okay. so long story short we just really opened it up we we rented a, a brush hog and we just went to town um, I kind of started things off in one of the plots that we have had, but I'll send you pictures on that too because we really, really opened this thing up. Um, it's bigger than it ever was before, so we should be able to get a whole lot more in there. Here, I'm sending you, I think I'm sending you the before and after of that plot that I'm talking about. It's the one that I think you know about by the pond there. Um, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, so we just opened it up, went around a bunch of trees. So that'll be good to have all that extra. And then we, we got the whole power line there opened up. So I think last year we had some issues getting these in. We just kind of didn't do our due diligence. And we probably had, oh, I don't know, maybe a 32nd of an acre's worth of food plots, which is like you might as well have nothing. And now we're probably probably close to pushing an acre total so it's just a huge jump from what we've done and we figured oh, yeah you got the pictures yeah uh, it's way different than the last time i was there yeah well you see the before and it's just all this tall tall grass and now to open right. it up like that we got a stand was that, was that brush hog on the goes on the skid loader no it's like a walk behind Oh, so that's why it was like such a grind because I started it off on that plot that I sent you and then my dad did like the whole power line. <laughs> There's like a nice hill in there, too. So he's just <laughs> sweating buckets. I don't know. It was brutal, but um, that's what I you were getting to put skid loader. And that's why I was like, oh, that's not going to take too long. I mean, those things just go to town. Well, this thing did, too, but it was, you know, like a 32 inch um, like blade with or whatever so it was still really good but we just had a huge area to try and clear with all that um but i know like i think last year my grandpa just had some trouble getting some of that tilled up because we didn't we, we didn't stay on top of it with the cutting throughout the year so he's trying to till under six seven eight foot tall grass which right. is just, you know, it just all got caught up in there, which is why we didn't really have the biggest food plot. So now I was like, let's just open this up, you know, and it's it's rain is still going to be a concern because it has been so dry. But it's like, man, it's it's a month away before I really need it to rain. And maybe it will, maybe it won't. But I if we all of a sudden get a whole ton of rain in August and then we just didn't put any food plots in because we thought it wasn't going to rain, I'd be so mad. So right. I'd, I'd rather put the work in, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But we opened all that up now, so we're going to have more food than we've ever had on there. And we limed it all, too, which was a, a crazy undertaking. We ended up spreading 2,900 pounds of lime huh. over the whole thing. Um, on the power line? Just your food plot? The whole thing. The power line and the the pond area there. And we did it all just with 50 pound bags. So we just yeah. took them one at a time. I think the first trip we made, we grabbed 20 bags and we were figuring on needing 40, but we didn't want to load down the truck too heavy. 
Right. And then have the truck break down, and then that's a huge problem. So we figured we would just make a couple trips. And we did the 20, and then we were like, man, I don't know. I think we're going to need more than 20. So we got 26, and then we still had to make a third trip. I got another 12, so we ended up having 58 bags, which doesn't (laughs) sound like much, but, man, what – you should have seen it. My dad took a video of me just like shimmying along with the bags, trying to get it all spread out over that big area. But it was a, it was a warm day. It was a long day, but I think in the end it's probably going to pay off out there. So I'm glad we did it. That's, that's what I try to tell myself too. The last two times I was up there, it was, you know, 90, like you're saying, and you're just like, Oh my goodness, what are we doing? Yeah. Well, what I said to my dad, too, and he, he agreed, was just like, I, the last thing I want to do is be sitting in the tree stand on opening morning or opening afternoon or whenever we get out there and just be like, man, I, I wish we would have done more for this. Like, we had the time. We could have done it. Why didn't we? You know, I don't want right. to have that thought because you only get one chance at each season. You know, you can't undo it once it's there. You can't really do any work once the season rolls around, so. Oh, I feel you. You know, nothing, everything that's good or everything takes, that that stuff comes with hard work. It's not just, you know, not just going to happen, not dumb luck. Right. Well, I mean, I feel a little of that, but, you know, you put in the time, it's obviously going to increase your chances quite a bit. So yeah. that's what I always tell myself. It's never a wasted trip to the woods. No. Well, and we figure, too, like, we don't have the greatest track record there the past couple of years. Um, my grandpa did see a really nice buck um, this past year. My dad had one come really, really close. So there's definitely been some potential there, but we haven't really shot any deer there in the past couple of years. So we figure we can't really screw it up. You know, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? We don't shoot any deer there this year? Well, that's what happened the past couple of years anyways so we might as well kind of take a gamble on it and go big for all that but i know we had talked a little bit about leaving the tree stands up all winter and how that might cause problems but i checked on them all and they were doing just fine we had like one ratchet strap that came loose but it was kind of not holding on the greatest anyways like just where it was it wasn't really fully grabbing on there so i kind of expected that one to go at some point but i got it rigged up there now in a much better situation so that'll be fine otherwise everything else held the squirrels ate a couple of the little like rubber protectors on our lifelines for our harnesses but you can just get replacements for those so i don't know i i wouldn't recommend leaving them but ultimately we did okay yeah, I would just be more concerned about the those ratchet straps. That's the only problem. That's the only thing that would really go. I mean, obviously rusty, but that's gonna take a while for it to rust all the way through. Right. Yeah, and no, all that. I think um, they're all in pretty good shape. We got to get up there now to plant, obviously, in early August, and then we'll have to cut some shooting lanes. Have you done any work with shooting lanes yet? Or are you gonna wait? Well, we gotta reinforce we're going to reinforce one of our gun stands so we'll probably just do it then okay gotcha yeah i mean it is one of the best times to do it when it's all thick like this because then i mean november comes around and you're really going to be able to see a lot better right yeah we we gotta get to it still but we kind of ran out of time we had the a couple of failures i don't know if i told you but when we were cutting one of the plots My dad's going along with the brush hog and all of a sudden just spits a blade out and it's just all mangled. I mean, totally bent up dull as can be just spat it right out. So he shuts it down. He's obviously a little bit disgruntled. Um, (laughs) and so we, he sets it like, he sets it up so that you can see underneath the seat where the blades at totally fine like it's a quarter inch thick maybe half inch thick solid as a rock sharp as can be totally fine blade so what he actually spit out was a 
blade that got lost on another piece of equipment somewhere along the line and then never got found. And we just happened <laughs> to find it with the brush hog cutting that this year. <laughs> so, funny. so there was like 10 minutes there. Where we were like, Oh God. Cause we still had the whole power line plot to go. This was still in the first plot. So we're thinking, well, <laughs> we're not going to get anything done that we really wanted to. And we're probably going to have to pay an arm and a leg to get this thing fixed. And then lo and behold, it wasn't even, from that <laughs> from that machine but oh that's funny yeah never a dull moment there <laughs> but yeah other than that um we got our our mock scrapes all repositioned that's going to be the next video that comes out i think um that'll be a good one too just kind of a shorter little how-to sort of thing um just did a little bit of maintenance because it's it's kind of nice, you know, you see the videos out there on, like, why you should do them or even kind of how to do them, but I feel like then there's always certain things that I would watch those videos and I'd go out and do it and I'd be like, well, I didn't really feel like I got all the information from that, so maybe need a little bit more in-depth, which I still kept it pretty short, but I just gave some of the more fine details of it all to kind of help people out, so that'll be a good one to watch coming up here next. And then, I don't know, we might have some some fishing videos coming out. It should be, I think you said you'll have a good food plot planting video as well. Well, I hope to get some cool footage and all that with uh, the drone. And, you know, if there's a couple of us up there, it's a lot easier for me to film. Or, you know, instead of if I'm just up there by myself or, like, my dad and uncles don't come, then it's more right. More fine try and get all the footage and still accomplish something yeah exactly well it sounds like you might be coming to visit this weekend too and we might have to do some driving around looking for deer i've got a couple of spots where i know there's some big ones growing i was gonna bring the camera anyway just yeah in case. yeah bring it bring it sounds right. like we might even try and get out on the lake on saturday and see if we can catch fish yeah i'd be down i haven't fished in probably seven years <laughs> i haven't I, I haven't fished in a while man uh, it's uh longer than i'd care to admit but yeah that, that could be a good time if the weather holds it's supposed to be pretty nice so yeah maybe we'll have some of that content coming out um i'd like to do another scouting video i'd like to go back to the spot we went to last year that had some of those giants over by your place yeah that was if you can make it back here for a weekend, I think we would make a almost a weekend out of it. Or it's, well, I guess it depends on my cameras or saying. I know you said you and I talked about just sitting in one of our tower stands and watching the bean field, but I'd like to do that. But I'd also like to go drive around right at dusk like we did last year, just because there's some there's some big boys running around. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's getting exciting, dude. We're getting a whole lot closer here, closer by the day. So I'm just gonna have to keep putting in the work as we go along and it's going to be here before we know it right i gotta start shooting more me too i just got a new target and we went out pretty sweet two days ago yeah yeah that's a good one it's the the one that you did the review on the high roller right mm -hmm. yeah i like it i only shot probably 12 arrows at it but i didn't lose any so it's always a plus always a plus yeah no, we got to get out there for sure. 12 a day is still quite a bit. Well, I haven't done any since, so I'm kind of falling behind. <laughs> wow. Well, you're a busy man. Yeah, I suppose. Well, yeah, we, we just figured we'd check in here. Um, kind of had a little bit to talk about there as far as what we've been up to getting through these summer months. I know everybody's pretty busy, but... Just wanted to keep the episodes coming out here. Um, I, we do have some guests in mind coming up here over the next couple of months. So I know that things will start to pick up a little bit. We've kind of been um, on break from guests for the past couple episodes. But hopefully we'll get some schedules to line up. Maybe get Colby and Eli back for an episode or two here coming up. And, and try and get some more guests and kind of change the pace up a little bit. I think it'd be good. Oh. All right. Yeah, well, I'm what? Yeah, I'm excited. 
Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Well, um, I guess we'll uh, we'll wrap this one up, unless there's anything else you want to cover here. But otherwise, we'll we'll get going and we'll be back next week. No, I'm good. All right. Yeah. In that case, uh, thank you guys for tuning in once again this week. Um, like we said, we're going to be back with more content of all kinds, podcasts, videos, all that good stuff. And we're only getting closer and closer to deer season. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys next time.